I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, January the 28th, 2015. Two IDF soldiers were killed today in an attack on Israel's north. As you may have seen on IBA News, initial reports said that seven IDF soldiers were lightly to moderately injured in the two-part attack this morning when anti-tank missiles fired from southern Lebanon struck unarmored IDF vehicles in the Hardove area. Updated reports confirm, though, that two IDF soldiers were killed in the attack, reportedly a company commander and a combat soldier. Up to seven other IDF soldiers were wounded. Mortar shells were also fired from Syria at IDF positions in the area of Mount Hermon in Israel's Golan Heights following the first incident. Lebanese terror group Hezbollah claimed responsibility for the attacks, saying they were in retaliation for Israel's alleged strike against Hezbollah in Syria last week. The IDF responded with artillery and airstrikes on Hezbollah targets in southern Lebanon. A spokesman for the United Nations said that a member of the UN peacekeeping force UNIFIL stationed in southern Lebanon was killed during the crossfire today. The UNIFIL soldier is reportedly a Spanish national. The peacekeeping force said that they were looking into the circumstances of his death. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu responded to the attacks on the IDF soldiers today warning Hezbollah not to test Israel, saying the IDF is prepared to act strongly on all fronts. Israeli President Reuven Rivlin cut his visit to the U.S. short after the deadly attacks in northern Israel today. Rivlin said he was returning immediately to the country, explaining that it was his role as president to visit the wounded and the bereaved families. The incidents today follow several projectiles being fired into Israel from Syria yesterday. As we reported to you, two rockets launched from Syria hit northern Israel yesterday morning, and the IDF responded to that attack with an IAF airstrike. The U.S. State Department had responded, saying they did not want to see escalation in the region, but they also expressed support for Israel. U.S. State Department spokeswoman Jen Psaki told reporters, we support Israel's legitimate right to self-defense, and have been clear about our concerns over the regional instability caused by the crisis in Syria. A trial against French comedian Dudonne Mabala Mabala began today in France. The comedian, who is known for his anti-Semitic statements, faces charges of racist speech, specifically for saying that French Jewish journalist Patrick Cohen should have died, quote, in the gas chambers. Dudonne faces a fine of up to $45,000 and one year in prison if he is found guilty. Meanwhile, France's main Jewish organization, CRIF, released a report showing that the number of anti-Semitic acts in France have doubled during 2014. Some 851 anti-Semitic acts were registered over the past year compared with 423 in 2013, with acts of physical violence rising from 105 to 241. The group noted that these anti-Semitic acts represent 51 percent of racist acts committed in France, while Jews make up only 1 percent of the French population. Criff said the dramatic rise was very worrying. The report was released yesterday on International Holocaust Remembrance Day. And French President Francois Hollande spoke at the Holocaust Memorial in Paris yesterday, renewing his call for a government action plan to combat anti-Semitism there. Hollande said the rise of anti-Semitic acts in France was, quote, an unbearable reality and that new laws would be implemented soon to fight the phenomenon. British-born Israeli journalist David Landau has died. Landau was the editor-in-chief of Haaretz from 2004 to 2008. He had founded the paper's English-language edition in 1997. Landau also served as diplomatic correspondent and later managing editor of the Jerusalem Post, as well as the Israel bureau chief for the Jewish Telegraphic Agency. He wrote several books and collaborated with former Israeli President Shimon Peres on two memoirs. Paris told Haaretz that Landau was, quote, a rare combination of an individual, religious in depth and liberal in breadth. Paris said David Landau's pen was dipped in conscientious ink. He was a man of absolute integrity, of principles and full objectivity. Landau died yesterday of brain cancer at the age of 67. He was buried in Jerusalem this afternoon. 
He is survived by his wife, three children, and eight grandchildren. Israeli business and financial paper Kalkalist reports that Amazon is in negotiations with the Israeli chip maker Annapurna Labs. Reports say the Israeli company could be bought by Amazon for between $350 and $370 million. The company is based in Yokneam in Israel's Lower Galilee. The proposal to purchase reportedly also includes an agreement by Amazon to open a research and development center in Israel. Last week, the American online document sharing company Dropbox bought Israel based startup CloudOn, a mobile document company, becoming Dropbox's first Israeli office. And turning now to our programming for tonight, Wednesday, January the 28th, at 8 o'clock, Jerusalem City Councilman Arya King, founder of the Israel Land Fund, argues for a united Jewish city of Jerusalem in a program sponsored by Americans for a safe Israel. And then at 9 tonight, Esther Waxman, mother of IDF soldier Nachshon Waxman, who was kidnapped and murdered by Hamas, sits down with Mark Golub on L'Chaim. That's tonight on JBS and JBSTV.org. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, January the 28th, 2015. I'm Tisha Bader.